Hey guys, my name's Justin Gage and welcome Behind the Lens. So today I wanted to do something I have not done yet and um, that was kind of take you guys on a trip from the shoot to actually the finished product. Um, I have never shown anyone my post-processing workflow so um, <laughs> a lot of people here actually think I don't know how to edit. So this commercial shoot, even though it was a personal project or like any commercial shoot, and that's a brief. Um, a brief, basically, solid idea. You know, if you're in school, it's like the assignment the teacher gives you. Um, if you're working, it's the brief the client gives you. In this case, it's the assignment I gave myself. So halfway between school and um, working for a client. So my brief came from a an image that was on my Instagram feed. It was one of the sponsored links that. I was checking out as I was taking my kid to tennis and was in a hurry so of course I shoved my phone in my pocket and I'd like I'll look at it later and of course it never came up again but even though I couldn't find it and I can't tell you what image it was or what brand it was advertising for or even what it was advertising for it was a strong enough image that the concept stuck with me so the original image actually had um, just a shoe sitting on some kind of cement block. It had rebar sticking out of it. And then there were other cement blocks kind of orbiting around the shoe. So, um, didn't want to do exactly the same thing, but I liked the, the I like that contrast. I like the um, modern art sculpture aesthetic of it. And I thought I could do something that would fit my, my aesthetic, my portfolio and that I could do very quickly to get done in minimal amount of time. And that later on I could use the techniques I was using and apply it to anything. You know, I could shoot jewelry this way with rose petals or feathers or snow, icicles, anything. It's just a question of how am I gonna use the studio to create this environment. So the set design aspect of it. I spend a lot of, I don't spend a lot of time, it's just set design is always my starting point. So, um, so I found the cleanest tennis shoe we had um, laying in the house and it was one of my wife's Nikes. Um, so I, I went off in that, it was gray with these blues and greens, so the blue background worked perfect with that. And um, and the gray works perfect with the cinder blocks. So um, neon colors are very trendy in sportswear. So that was the starting point. Um, then the setup. Um, I know my studio well enough. I've, uh, it's been open for a month, and we've only done model shoots. This was my first product shoot, but I know well enough where I know where to place the lights to get the effect I wanted. Um, I placed the camera really high. Um, I fixed the cinder block on a fishing line that's anchored on these hooks I have up there. Now, they're not sold as photography accessory hooks. They're sold as kitchenware accessory hooks. And if they were sold as photography accessory hooks, they probably would add a zero on the price. Um, but that's your little secret, don't tell anyone. But they do slide and everything, so I was able to get my cinder block fixed up and I had one on one side and two on the other to keep it from tilting and from tilting. Um, and then to get it level I just could scoot one or two of the hooks to one side or the other to get it nice and level. Then to fix the shoe on it, the tip of the shoe was resting on the cinder block and I put a shoe tree inside that shoe. And that shoe tree was hooked in with a fishing line too. And the reason, I, I didn't have to do that because I was just shooting one shoe, but this was about developing habits and systems for commercial products. 
So when you're doing tests, one of the things you test is workflows. So if I had a whole collection to shoot, um, attaching each individual shoe every single time when I was ready to switch up would make me lose not huge amounts of time, but even if it's 10 minutes at a time and I need to shoot 15 shoes, that, that ends up being a lot of time that is wasted doing this. Whereas I attach the shoe tree, pop it out, pop it in the next shoe, that takes about five seconds. And I don't have to touch my whole installation and get up and wiggle and jiggle and everything. So um, getting the length of the fishing line was one of the trickiest things and everything's kind of balancing up there. So I got the shot I needed with that. So I scooted that over to the side just in case I need to come back to it. You know, you, you get that brilliant last moment idea. I, in this moment, I didn't. No, no light bulbs went off. Um, but I scooted over and then took these, I'm calling them B-roll. So they're just basically pieces of the same cinder block that I whacked off when I made the shape. I held those individually, but on one fishing line. So they were kind of spinning when I was shooting them. So then when it came time to import everything to my editing software, which I use Affinity. First image was of course the shoe on the cinder block. So my go-to tool in Affinity, and this project was no exception, is the what they call the in-painting brush. And that's how I removed all the fishing wire out of the... Th th that's how I cloned out all the fish fishing lines that were left in that image. So the in-painting brush, and I'm probably pe preaching the choir, a lot of people probably know this in... Adobe probably has the same thing, they may call it the same thing, they may call it something different, but anyway. The in-painting brush basically is like your cloning stamp or your healing brush. Uh, the only difference is instead of cloning a certain area and copying a certain area, it's actually doing a calculation of all the textures and the, if there's any patterns, it's going to replicate those patterns in the area. So it takes a little bit longer to calculate than just cloning an area because you're, in that case you're just copying. In this case, it takes about a second and a half to calculate the area, but then it's actually gonna replicate that texture. So it takes a little bit longer to apply one brush stroke, but I do in one brush stroke what it takes me a couple brush strokes at low opacity with a cloning stamp or a healing brush to do with those brushes and usually this does it right the first time and I love this brush for that. Once I cloned out all the fishing lines, I did that to the B-roll rocks too and once I cloned out the fishing lines on those, I isolated them from the background and then brought them over to my main canvas and started composing with them. And then it just basically was a question of um, composing with those different rocks and then of course I cloned them and then used the free transformation tools or in the perspective tools to change the shape. Um, some of them I would flip horizontally or vertically and and just fit them in kind of like you would a jigsaw puzzle. Um, it was kind of like building a bouquet of concrete. Um, once I got all the pieces basically where I was happy with the composition. I did try um, adding, you know, dust and fragmentations and little um, pieces of shatter that would actually be more explosive. Um, like I said, the, the original idea, I really liked kind of the modern art sculpture aspect of it. And um, it was cleaner, it was simpler this way. And it's maybe less realistic as far as the concrete is exploding around the shoe landing but it's a shoe without a foot in it that's making concrete explode, so does it really need to be realistic? And um, so I kind of took the decision to go cleaner and um, simpler, and, um, and I'm happy with that. Again, it's not necessarily realistic, but it's not necessarily meant to be realistic anyway, so. Um, after I did that, I merged those layers, and then I, um, blurred the pieces of concrete that were flying around to kind of give it the depth of field that would match um, with the, the depth of field of the shoe on the rock. 
So, you know, pieces that are probably further away from the lens should be a little bit more out of focus. And once everything kind of was blended into a basic image, I did a couple final um, contrast and brightness layers. Uh, not over the whole image, not like a whole filter on everything. Um, I would either paint in certain areas or uh, erase certain areas. So and I erased the areas where I didn't want that contrast and brightness adjustment. And then the other layer, which was the opposite, so if one layer was brighter and one layer was darker, um, I painted in just the areas where I wanted, like the shoelaces and the Nike logo and things like that. So, um, and that was it. Uh, from starting on the concept um, to finished work, we're looking at 2 p.m. this afternoon to um, 6 p.m. when we posted the image. So it, it, it was very quick and part of doing this was pushing myself to, to be able to knock out very clean images that could be used for a, a brand's advertising, whether it's on social media or even printed. I mean, they were shot at the Hostel Blood so you could print it on a bus stop poster and have it... Um, full resolution when you're standing right in front of it. So I, I know that's gonna start debates on what resolution you need for a print, but anyway, <coughs> not going into that today. We can go into that another time. I already see the trolls. Yeah, it's my troll face. I got a good troll face. It's probably look like a troll even when I'm not making my troll face. So I'm actually really pleased with this image. It's going to be kind of the forerunner in my uh, product section of the portfolio. And I'm really happy with the time frame I was able to do it in. I know this video is longer than the recommended length for YouTube videos, so I apologize if you have endured this this far. But if you did like it, um, I honestly think we, we should make this a thing. We're, we're going to do half day challenges. So from Concept designing the set to finished image half a day. We'll, we'll start doing that as a challenge. Maybe we'll do it once a month. Maybe if we can, can we'll do it more often than that. But um, anyway, if this was interesting to you, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It actually really does help us. Um, if you had any comments on anything, um, trolls, that means just start typing away. Never read the comment section. Never read. Of course, you can't help yourself, but. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time behind the lens. Take care, guys.